Hey, what's up everybody? Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. I can't believe it's been so long that I've done a proper video that I've turned gray and somehow my hair shrunk. But uh, anyway, I was working on a new tune. You can check out a preview of it here. We're just going to do a quick little scrub mix so I could get a sense of how I want this thing to sound. And boom, up popped an update for the Softube Console 1 and spoiler alert, it's got full Logic Pro X support. So let's get right into what they updated. All right, so the main update is obviously now you can control the volume, the panning and your sends. So I've got one of my acoustic guitar tracks set up here. You can see the fader going up and down by adjusting the fader control here. And if I'm adjusting the pan, that's updating as well. And then with sends, it's very cool. You hold down the shift key and then you can adjust the level of your sends. Um, now there's only three knobs on the console one so you can only control up to three sends. I don't think that's going to be a big problem. At least not for me because I typically only use mm, three, sometimes four in an extreme case, but it's pretty much delay reverb and a parallel compressor that I use for my sends. So updating that is pretty neat. And then also you notice the color coding here is updated. So it used to just be all uh, one color now, but now it does match the color of whatever you've got set up in your DAW, which is pretty cool. So if you switch between all of these different things, they're going to match the colors that you have down um, in your uh, whatever you set up inside of Logic, which is very cool. So now I'm just going to cycle through the different modes so you can see what's been updated there. So first, obviously, the sizing of the window is much better than what it was before. I don't even think you could resize it in the last one. I think it was a fixed size, but I don't remember. Um, but now you can keep it full size and then you can have it in your extra monitor if you've got a dual monitor set up and leave it up there permanently. That might just save you from toggling the display on or off, which is not that big of a deal. So this is the main mode that I do my work in. So I've got my charts here up at the top. It's gonna tell you what plugins you have loaded. Same as before. Um, but the contrast and the color is not so dull like it used to be in the old version. So it is a little more punchy and it's a little bit easier to see. Another mode you can switch to is the channel strip mode. So I don't really remember using this mode a lot when I was doing it because it didn't have those three features that they've added for Logic. So you still you'll, you're gonna get all of your channel strips that you've got loaded across here at the top. And all of these things that you can see here that are highlighted in brighter colors, those are all controllable. So again, your volume up and down, your pan. If I switch to a track that has sends, you can see your sends adjusting there as well. Your EQ, whatever EQ curve you have loaded in there, you can adjust that here as well. So this is gonna be really handy when you get into final mix mode and you just wanna make some final tweaks. Um, the other modes, there's two compact modes now this is the original compact mode, so it's just gonna give you the volume settings. So if you're doing like a quick mix and you're just trying to level things out, this one can be very handy. And this is the mode that they added, which just gives you the uh, whatever channel it is that you've got selected. So as you're cycling through, you can see that updating here. Um, the last update that is actually very handy is you don't need to put the console one plugin on a channel strip, or sorry, on a track, to just control the basic DAW features, which is cool. So if I switch to a track, let's go with uh, this track 10. I have I don't have the console one plugin loaded here, but I can control the basic functions. So I can control the volume, the panning, and I can control the sends without having to put the plugin on there, which is pretty neat. The only problem that I found so far in about a day's worth of testing is using the console one plugin in dual mono mode. So what I've got set up here is I've got um, my acoustic guitar tracks are running into a track stack in Logic. So this is basically a summing bus and I've got all of those summing buses that are outputting to one acoustic guitar track. And this is just so I can get some consistency and smoothness and compression and volume and everything for all of the different guitar tracks. And typically I use mid side processing a lot. And in the old console one, this one does the same thing. If you put it in dual mono mode, it's gonna ask you to set the track name. And then the track name that you set will show up when you open up your on-screen display. So it doesn't matter if you're using stereo or mono, it's gonna ask you to set two different tracks here. So if I go into mid side mode, 
click on mid, it's gonna ask me to set the track name. I'm just gonna call this acoustic guitar mid and then side. I'm gonna set this and I'm gonna call this acoustic guitar side. Now when I pop up the display, I've only got still the one track here, the acoustic guitar bus track, which is not so good. So if I switch this to stereo and I don't switch the channels, now when I go here, now you can see I've got everything back again. So I can uh, do, do whatever adjustments I want with the console one. If I flip this back to dual mono, it's gone. It disappears. There's nothing I can do to do that. And I haven't been able to find a setting that allows me to do it. So even if I open up this here and I want to set the track name, let's try it again. Track one. And let's set this again. Let's call this track two. I don't have the two different tracks in here. You can't click on this down here to separate them. Um, this little splash screen stays there. And then if I open up the console one plugin, I don't have any options in here to actually view that, but I can still adjust them in this. So I could just do it this way if I wanted to process mid and side. Uh, but when I open up on screen display mode, nothing for track 32. So none of these actually do anything other than the volume and the panning and whatever sends I might have set up. So maybe I'm just missing something. I'll go through the support articles again and see if there's something I missed for mid side, but that's really the only thing I noticed. So overall, I would say this is a fantastic update. One, and this is really the big one, you can spend all of your time in the console one now. You don't have to flip back between your DAW. And for me, this actually would negate having to get a fader port or the fader one or whatever's the other um, soft tube option on there because now that I can control the volumes and pans and I've got a good display mode that lets me be able to level these things, I don't really see a need for that for my specific use case. So that's gonna save me 750 bucks to be able to spend that money on something else. Ideally like a new monitor because as I was filming this my right KRK monitor decided it just didn't want to work anymore So that one really keeps you in console one which is great the nice little updates with the interface So showing the uh, whatever colors you have set up on your tracks just makes it easier to kind of visually see and cycle through and especially not having to put the plug-in on one of your tracks if you just want to control the volume and the panning and the sends. So I think this is a really great update. It's much faster, it's much snappier, and I so far have not had the problem of a track just disappearing in the console one. So sometimes you have to go up here and you have to hit this reset the on-screen display because it will just get unsynchronized for some reason. So you'll switch between tracks on the hardware itself and nothing will change in your DAW. I haven't noticed any of that. This is a pretty small project so far. So what, there's 30, 34 tracks in total on this one. I might have maybe two or three more. All right, so just to sum it up, this is an awesome update. So the switch to metal from OpenGL makes the interface much better. So the contrast is better. It looks nicer. The nice touch that they added of synchronizing the colors of the tracks is pretty handy, plus being able to resize it is pretty cool. But obviously the big three, volume, panning, and sends means, for me at least, I don't need to buy a fader one because that would really be the only reason. Before this update, what I was doing is I was just adjusting the input and the output gain on the console one, but now that I can control the volume and I can control the panning, um, it's such an awesome update. So hope you enjoyed this video and remember to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.